And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome on into the Dragon's Den. Uh, my name is Digital Dragon, and I'm a 3D printing variety streamer here on Twitch. Uh, what does that mean? Well, it means we do everything from printer assemblies and modifications to full up printer builds like our Voron uh, Trident and 2.4 to some prototyping such as the uh, Zero G Mercury 1 fully enclosed uh, full frame build that was done under beta or the trad rack that was done under a closed beta. We also do some 3D printing uh, on stream such as some of our cosplay items as well. Welcome on in Westry 1. How are you doing this morning? Hopefully you're doing well. Um, today, uh, we're going to switch back. Um, so Tuesdays and Thursdays are weekday streams. We're working on an Annex Engineering K3, uh, which is a, a cross XY gantry. It's basically still a Cartesian um, printer. And then on the weekends, such as today, we're going to be working on the Voron 2.4 build for Chewy. So it's going to be like this one or this one here, as far as the build goes. Doing good, doing good. Yes, I am doing well, Westry. Um, just uh, ran downstairs while the opening uh, scene was going and did the eye drops because I almost forgot to do my eye drops this morning. Um, so other than that, yeah, just uh, chilling out, trying to get some parts prepped and ready for today. Uh, Moving things around, cleaning up, getting rid of some boxes to try and make some room so I don't trip and break my neck in here. And uh, yeah, been good so far. Uh, everybody looking forward to Christmas here in a couple of days. Like I said, I've got my younger of my two sons out here visiting with us right now. Um, Westry. Your package, I think, was supposed to be here Wednesday. It still hasn't arrived yet. It apparently took four days to go from Georgetown to Louisville. You know, United States Postal Service at Christmas time. Uh, but last I saw, it was supposed to be here today. Um, in fact, I can double, triple check that real fast here. Um, and if it shows up while we're on stream, I will definitely unbox it on stream. If not, then I will have to do a, do a, a non-standard stream to do an unboxing on that. Um, yes, yeah, so I've got two different boxes that are supposed to be showing up today. Sorry about this. Um, one second here. The Fabrico box. The one coming from Fabrico and the other one. Yes. Coming from U Westry one and they are both out for delivery. So they should be on the delivery truck right now. So right now it says anywhere between 10 and 2. So we'll see. Um, I'm assuming that that box is not going to go in my mailbox. So they will have to bring that to the front door. So good morning, Silverback. How are you doing today? Oh, me too, Westry. If it gets here and it's all busted up, I'm going to be heartbroken. And I know you will be. Um, so. Okay, now. Um, so we've got a little bit of coffee going this morning. We're waiting on our normal Dunkin' run. Just said we got the sun here. Things are just slightly different running around the house as far as our daily uh, routines and stuff go. You're good. You finally made the jump to printing ASA. Nice, nice. Yeah, um, I still wind up printing a lot of ABS. Um, but yeah, a lot of people say ASA is a little less warp prone, um, prints a little bit easier. Excuse me. Good morning, Royal Nomi, and happy anniversary. 
I did see that on the socials today. So congratulations to you and BC. Hope you are feeling well. Use a ton of packing. Well, good, Westry. It, sh it should get here okay. Now, if it gets here and that box just looks like somebody's been drop kicking it, I'm already not happy with my mail delivery person. So we'll, we'll just uh, go down to the postal service and have a, a nice conversation with them. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, ASA works really well. Uh, the one thing that I've been working on lately has been uh, doing a, uh, the last couple of builds. So the Voron V02 that went to Maker Millwright um, and the um, Annex Engineering K3 were both printed in a PC ABS blend because those chamber temps are going to be sitting in the upper 50s to low 60s. So I wanted something that was a little bit more heat tolerant. And it's like the next step. So my plan for the annex is get it printing, get it printing well, and then start using the um, annex to print the polycarbonate CF for the black box build. And one second, folks. Thank you, Mr. Dragon. Nope, you're good. You're good. So, Miss Dragon just brought us some snackies. Not sure what all kinds of snacks. But the, the most important thing that she brought was the Dunkin' Coffee. So we've got our second set of coffee for the day. We are now good. We are now whole. Building can start. Yep. Morning, Miss Dragon. Westry and Royal Nomi, um, I know that you will, well, you guys should hopefully be, well, no. Royal will be at, at Rocky Mountain. I'm not sure if you're going to Rocky Mountain, Westry, but uh, Miss Dragon will be in the vicinity, and I'm going to try and get her to show up at the show at least on Saturday. Awesome, Royal Nomi, yes. Yes, I got to see my Nomi again. Uh, see Nomi in BC and then hear her yell old man and watch everybody look around like, what is going on here? Um, awesome. Uh, and yeah, so we're back. If you're there, you'll get a, a chance to see Mrs. Dragon as well. Uh, and thank you for the, for the Merry Christmas wishes. And I wish everybody else here a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year if I don't see you between now and then. Um, I believe, I, I don't think we're going anywhere today, but tomorrow. Um, so my brother's got to do the whole split family thing um, because he's got family in, on both sides in Goldsboro. So I believe this year it's going to be Christmas Eve at my parents. And then he's going to go Christmas Day to... Um, his wife's side of the family where they've got plenty of nieces, nephews, bigger uh, stuff to, to have fun with. So I think we're going to be heading over to Goldsboro tomorrow night and doing hopefully a little more subdued uh, Christmas Eve. Okay, Wester, I get it. Yeah, Rocky Mountain is... April. So it's like the 20th and 21st or something like that. Um, I did sign up for a table, so we will have a table, Royal Nomi, uh, if you need a place to kind of chill out. I'll have a place with hopefully a couple of chairs there. Um, what else? Um, yeah, I don't know how much we're going to be bringing because I believe what's going to happen is Mrs. Dragon is going to drive out and 
me and Evil Diesel are going to fly out. Um, and then uh, we'll, we'll fly out and then we'll be driving back in a U-Haul or some type of moving van uh, to bring some stuff back um, from my mother-in-law's house. So... Yeah, and then Goshen for Murph next year is definitely uh, Murph and Ur for the easy ones because we can drive to that. And I can normally bring more stuff to those because when we drive, we'll take the truck. And at least for Ur, I figured out I could take six printers. So yeah, we, we wound up taking six printers. We brought the Trident, the 2.4, um, the Zero G Mercury 1, so this one. And three different rooks. So, along with two death racers, a dragster, and a bunch of other stuff. So, saving money for the little bamboo. Okay, the okay the A one. I was gonna say, is, are you talking about the A one or the A one mini? Because there's kind of two now. Uh, so good, good, good. You'll try for Murph um, as long as life plays. Well, we understand that one, Royal Nomi. Um, okay, so where we left off. Ugh. Once again, we're on the Voron 2.4 build. And where we left off um, was the tool head. So the color scheme for this printer um, is Galaxy Purple. So Polymaker uh, ABS Galaxy Purple and the Galaxy Dark Gray. And Chewy wanted the entire uh, gantry, uh, basically from the deck panel up, to be the purple. And he had most of the parts already printed, so there's a couple of things that I had to print, like the whole stealth burner, um, and a couple of other things here or there. You'll notice we still have some wires dangling around here. Um, so what I wound up doing, let me see if I can sneak you guys in here a little bit closer, is I did put the front shroud on. Um, it is fully, let me verify that. Yes, it is bolted on. Um, and part of the reason that I did that and went ahead and did some of the connections on here, the thermistor connection, which is the little black wire right here, is right behind this edge. There is no way you can plug that in with the board secured to the side of the tool head. So you got to undo the two screws, pull the board out to be able to get to the thermistor, the two pin thermistor. And it's those really, really tiny like ZH pins. They're, they're stupid tiny. So what I normally wind up doing, they provided some pre-crimped like ribbon cable. So like for the X end stop here, I just took two of those pre-crimped, plugged it onto the connector, and then soldered it on to the end stop. So your end stop wire comes off the end stop, which you guys probably can't see. So let me bring you in closer. So on the version 2.4, rather than a printed piece, there's this aluminum extension that pops out. So all I did was I took two of these wires and soldered them to the end stop. Once again, you use the, the two outer pins. And then this wire is just going to come around, snake right up the side, and is gonna plug in. Let's see if I can get that to stay there and not pull off. It nicely. Well, it's not the um, the cable. Oh, there we go. So our end stop pin is going to go in this top left connector, and once again, you can see how small these these little crimps are. These things are insane. Good morning, Chris. How are you? And then. The bottom left connector is going to be where we're going to plug in our, excuse me, not the bottom left, the bottom right connector. 
is where we're going to plug in our CNC tap sensor. So once again, this comes pre-crimped. And at first I thought, okay, this is the, is the correct side. This wasn't the correct side. This is the side that goes into the um, Omron sensor on the back of the CNC tap. The other side was almost a standard JST connector. So what you'll see here was I did a little bit of doctoring. I slit the sleeving some so I could open it up and I took a red, a blue, and a black wire from those pre-crimped wire strands and soldered them in and then covered them up with heat shrink. So each one's heat shrinked and then I heat shrink the tube down to make this connector. Now, one thing that you need to be very, very careful of Check your pin outs. Red should be power, black should be ground, blue should be your signal. On this cable, on this cable, red was power, blue is ground, black was signal. Okay. That's how it came. And the only way I could figure that out is to gently pull this back so I could see the color of the wire underneath the heat shrink here going into this connector and then using a um, multimeter to ohm it out. So you got to be cognizant of that is, you know, the colors in the manual say one thing, always good to double check these pinouts to make sure that the pinouts are the same for the board you're going to be using. One of the big hints was it wasn't pre-crimped with the right crimp to go on an SB2209. And each board, even boards from Big Tree Tech, like there are differences in the order of the pens between an EBB36 and an EBB SB2209. So you got to be cognizant of that. Okay, so we just need to add these other two connectors in, and oh, you know what? I think I actually pinned this out to go in this, yeah, the left one. And you got to figure out the right orientation for said pin to go in. That's going to go there. We're going to bring this down and around. And it's going to plug into the back. Our X in stop is going to come up and go right in the top there. And I validated the pin out. So this is the, you know, out of the three pins, the one on the left is the five volt pin. So that's the one we won't use, of course, because we don't need to provide power to our in stop. If it had an LED, we'd have to provide power. We don't. Um, so we got that. We'll Plug in our uh, CNC tap. We'll route this wire as appropriate and then we'll be done. We can close the lid here and we'll be good. Okay. Our um, heater, once again, connects right around the back. So the heater just connects right around the back. It is a standard Molex connector. It's just the fact that in this case, we would have to. Um, uh, so this had a standard uh, heater wire, so it was really, really long, made to do a home run. We just cut it to the right length, added the Molex Microfit connector, and then it just goes right around and plugs in. Once again, our CNC tap is going to plug in right here. I'm going to figure out how I need to route my wire. It could go down and around like that. Um, but more than likely, I'm going to keep it up here and just fold the wires in underneath the shroud. Okay. I'm going to move you guys back out here so I don't get you sick and I can set you down. Good morning, zombie. How are you doing today? Hope you're doing well. And then I'm just going to turn this around so I can see what I'm doing to get this plugged in.
Tiny pumps can't see what side of the connector pins are on. So in this case, the pins are towards the, the back side of the connector. So you just need to get this lined up and pushed in. Might be easier if I done it before. So that's in there now. And like I said, we'll just have to work on kind of tucking our wires in and out of the way some so that our shroud closes. Which is always fun trying to Get things to pop into the shroud. This one we're going to have to work with. Okay, that part's done. Now, at some part, when we do the wiring, we will have our CAN bus cable that will come from, from here and go around. Um, we're going to be working with the CAN bus a little bit later um, once we get our boards installed. Um, I tend to sometimes try and do all the pre-configuration of the boards, you know, flashing all the boards and do it on the bench top. Um, we're going to... I think we're just going to do it on the printer this go around, um, except for possibly the UTC. But we'll see how we play that out. Um, right now, we're going to take the printer and flip it upside down so that we can start installing our um, electronics on the DIN rails. Set that upside down. I'm going to raise you all up so I can get you a better view. Okay. And let me switch to this view. There we go. So we're starting into our electronics, which means we definitely have our Crimping Ain't Easy shirt on. Um, thank you, Nero, for that. And it kind of has a good suggested layout here as far as where to put all your electronics. So that it, once again, it makes it so that all of your 110 um, stuff should be in, in the same place. That keeps a little bit of separation between your 110 and your DC voltage. And it kind of gives you a good layout here. Once again, the back is, um, and the diagram is kind of facing me. So let me turn the printer around 180 degrees. And we will be using, um, some uh, uh, conduit channel in here. Uh, it's going to be interesting because you're going to see all of that from underneath. So you'll see the conduit channel uh, VHB through this clear polycarbonate. So, but we'll we'll work with what we've got. 
Actually, I didn't think about that. I may just set the printer back down because we need to go ahead and get everything put on their mounts first, which will be a little bit easier. And mind you, most of the stuff here um, came the way you see it. Well, not, let me rephrase that. Um, it came various um, ways, um, like the octopus board and the Raspberry Pi 4B were in some other um, printed case. Um, there is some potentially suspect wiring going on. Uh, some, we had some good crimps where the wire came right off the crimp. I don't know. Yeah. So we'll be redoing, we, we won't use any of this type of wire. I'm going to actually snip this off. I kind of like the idea of using the USB, but we'll snip it off and we'll do correct connections when connecting to screw down terminals on a power supply. We're not going to use uh, barrels, which I guess are a step up from bare wire, but we're going to actually use port connectors when connecting to, you know, screw down terminal blocks like that. We're also not going to use a Fotec SSR. Um, we, you know, I did go out and buy a, a, an actual Omron. Um, yeah, I would not suggest going out and buying a Fotec. You know, get a Crydon, was it a Crydon or an Omron? Don't, don't get the Chinese Fotec. Just save yourself the, the uh, possibility of burning your house down or setting your printer on fire. Um, we're going to be using a few things out of this bag. Um, let me grab the parts related to the Z chain and get those out of the way. And this will let us to start to mount up our electronics. So our Raspberry Pi um, mount, and we're going to need to use some M2 by 10 socket head screws. Or not, well, yeah, socket head screws, the self-tapping screws. And I want to say the ones that were in this kit are the, no, these are, these are the, so on your self-tappers, Get the socket head cap screw kind, if at all possible. Do not get your little um, Phillips head screwdriver kind. I, I say that because every one of those I have tried to use, I shear the um, the head off of them or uh, strip them. So take one of your DIN rail mounts or clips. And let me clean these up because apparently the uh, parts that Chewy sent were not, were printed with a brim, but were not cleaned. So let me square that away. Um, Chewy, if you look at this bod later, looking at these prints, you probably need just a tad bit more squish. Probably 0 Okay. Say hi to Peanut for us, Royal Nomi. So, uh, Zombie, what is it that you've been working on on your stream? I know you've been doing some builds, and I think you were starting your tap changer, but I'm not sure if you've actually started it or just did like your overview stream.
And Chris, I know that uh, you're almost done with your wiring, right? If I remember right from last night. So, kind of look at the orientation. Your the part of your clip that you would uh, flex up goes towards the smaller side of these two um, cutouts. So tap changer is a modified, I believe it's a 350 size 2.4. And I was sitting there wondering, well, why wouldn't that work with a Trident? But it's because all of the tool heads get mounted across the front rail of the 2.4. Um, and you can have, I believe, up to six tool heads, depending on if you do like dragon burners or mini stealth burners or however you set them up, but it's, it's full tool heads. So you'd have the extruder and everything on the tool head and it's made to work with, I believe the boop. So it's a modified version of boop um, as the actual uh, piece that picks up the tool head. So it looks really interesting. Um, so yeah, definitely something you want to check out. So we've got the mount created. Let me get rid of some of the wharf there. And now we're going to mount the Raspberry Pi. Like I said, this is a 4B. Um, can't tell. What size RAM is on it? I'm not sure why, but it feels like there was like the adhesive from a uh, like a heat sink or something that got all over the bottom of this thing. Yeah, but I'm not sure if this is a two or four or six. I'm sorry, two, four or eight gig. Probably a two gig. But. Yeah, and have you started on that build, um, Zombie, or is it still something that you're, that you're getting ready to start on? Because the frame is pretty much the exact same build process, right? The base frame. Once again, we're going to use our two by 10 self tapping screws to mount these. Hey, Aaron, how's it going? Early stream. Uh, my Saturday streams are always at 10. Might be early for you. I know you were going to plan on possibly doing an early stream to continue working on your um, Poco Press, which I saw your post last night. You guys have made some pretty good progress considering you just got it, what, yesterday? Yeah, we kind of walked through what what needed to be done to add the last few wires to the um, stealth burner tool head. We're using the EBB SB2209 CAN bus board. Um, so of course we will have to set up our CAN bus. Now this is a Octopus 1.1 board. It does have CAN bus. But it's CAN bus through the, uh, it's like an Ethernet jack. 
versus I think like the Manta M8Ps and I think even the newer Octopus have gone to a JST header. So the CAN bus pens are the two center pens and this jack. So he did provide a UTC, so we'll probably just do the UTC um, versus the RJ11. Because quite honestly, I don't think I have an RJ11 jack. Um, I've got Cat5 cable, but I don't have an RJ11 um, jack to actually um, create a, um, a pin out for it. So chances are what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the cable that comes with the SB2209, cut it and do the uh, four pin connector. So because um, the SB2209 uses an XT30 plus two connector on the side, I can go into either of these two four pin connectors. So I'll probably go into the white one just because it's easier. But if you're using an EBB36, it uses the smaller black connector on the tool head and the polarity is reversed between the UTC and the tool head. So to prevent inadvertently plugging that cable in backwards, I will always use the white connector on the UTC when I'm using an EBB36. So that way there's no possibility whatsoever of installing that cable backwards um, and it's just a good safety measure. We did that in the military all the time where you would use different style connectors on different ends so the cable could physically only go on one way and prevent any polarity issues. Uh -oh. And um, this will be going through a, a Pretty sure there is a fuse on here. I know there is a fuse on the 24 link on the SB2209 because I blew that ceramic fuse completely off the board when I plugged it into 110 um, that one time. So, hey, Solar3DP, how are you doing? Good morning, Createx Brit nerd. Um, we had several conversations yesterday, so. Me and Createx Brit have started to uh, ponder which particular droid or droids we are going to build for Earth. So there is a um what is this? The LRS five or twenty five five? Excuse me, not the L RS twenty five five. This is a little five volter that will run the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to be short a mount for this. So I'm going to hold off on mounting this just yet. And I'll need to print off at least one more of these clips or find one of another color that I already have printed out because I normally have a couple of these DIN clips printed out. So we will hold off on mounting that particular th little jewel, that little nugget. And we will go ahead and mount our power supply. And this is the Meanwell LRS 224. Again, you don't need a, a big powerful one. You don't need like a 350 for this build because it's a mains powered bed. So, let me just clean up the I feel like too, he just pulled the brim off, but he didn't actually clean up the edges of the part. I was trying to do a little bit of cleaning and reorganizing this morning um, to give myself some room to run around in here without 
while I'm breaking my neck. The, uh, we'll call that the hazards of doing multiple builds at the same time. So we've got the, uh, the Annex K3 that we're doing during the week streams and the 2.4 that we're working on on the weekends. First, oh. And they're installing this with your flexible sides of your clips towards you towards me. And these are four by sixes. Use the two and a half. Um, I'll have to make coffee. Yeah, I definitely got to go make coffee. Yeah, how's the shoulder feeling, Solar and Royal Nomi, if we're going to be talking about uh, surgeries? How is the knee doing? Hopefully it's doing well and you're getting around a little bit easier these days. Please, folks, especially on power supply mounts, if they call for M4 by 6, use M4 by 6s. Um, I will tell you, as I was pulling the electronics out of whatever they were currently mounted in, when they came to me, um, I had everything from an M38 to an M320 going through the octopus board holding it in place. It, it was. It was very hodgepodgey. Um, so try and use the right size screw, um, especially when you're dealing with electronics. Um, the last thing you wanna do is put a longer screw in your power supply and actually ground that screw to the bottom of a power supply and wind up blowing a power supply. So just be careful. Um, the other thing we're gonna do is once we get um, everything mounted, we're going to do the 110 wiring, and then before we do anything else, we're going to uh, put a uh, voltmeter on it and make sure that our outputs are 24 volt and not higher or lower. Um, or in the case of our 5 volt, we'll make sure that it's doing 5 volt, not higher or lower, um, because we don't want to blow any downstream electronics because we're pumping out too much or not enough. Right? These should be factory. I mean, these are mean well. That's the other thing. These are mean well. They should be good. They should be within spec. It's just worth a couple of minutes to verify. Um, and if you're not using mean well, or if you're not using like the Morn Sun that you would get from LDO with the V0 build plates, your guess is as good as mine what it's set at out of the factory, or if anybody even bothered to check it. So uh, the power supply mounts in place. Um, now we need to put together the mounts for our um, controller. And yes, the octopus will be the same on both sides. So that's good. Flex part of the clip would be towards me. And if you paint these clips with brim, you really need to go and clean them up so that they will function as spring-loaded clips. Make them get on and off the DIN rails a little bit easier. So that's what I'm doing is going and cleaning up the um, brim material. 
um, the brim has been pulled off, obviously, but normally when you use a brim and you peel it off, there is a layer that will still remain. So you've got to take off that one layer line. Otherwise, it just shag, you know, sheds like a dog or cat. Hey, Hutch's Makerspace. Welcome on in. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I did post up the last week's uh, video from last week's Chewy build. And as soon as this is done with today, I'm going to post up the Thursday or Tuesday and Thursday stream for the uh, Annex Engineering A3 build. Um, and when I say post up, I mean publish the VOD and then export it over to YouTube. Um, I have noticed that I'm, I'm getting trickles of new uh, subscribers on both YouTube and Twitch. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all the follows and the subscribes. I appreciate that. It helps me continue to grow the channel and bring you new builds. Oh, flexible clip part towards us. One goes one way, one goes the other. These are more of our self-tapping screws. Hey, Chewy, how's it going, my friend? Are your ears burning? Coffee, then shower and relax and wait for your wife to get home to make some dinner. Nice, fish on the grill. What kind of uh, fish? Just curious. I, I like fish. I just don't eat much of it because my wife is allergic. So normally I cook fish. Um, well, I either go out and, and order fish when I'm out or I will cook fish while she's out of town just because I'm not going to, you know, go ahead and cook it and, and take the chance of a cross-contamination in a hospital run. I kind of used to do the same thing with um, uh, peanut butter because she's allergic to peanuts as well. So um, I used to go to like Cold Stone Creamery and get uh, like a peanut butter based uh, ice cream sundae or whatever. But I would do that when she's not around because invariably we'd be out and it'd be day night. I'll get ice cream, get something with you know, something that she's allergic to and then give her a kiss and make her mad at me. All right, yeah, definitely go get coffee. Definitely go get coffee, Solar. You've been busy this morning. All right, now are you listening at work again? And Chris, heads up, I'm probably going to send you a DM um, via Discord. Don't worry about responding. Enjoy time with your family. I'm just going to send you the DM before I forget. Because if not, I will forget. 
Um, and the controller board. And, uh, we'll figure it out. Um, this gets connected with M3 by six. M3 by six. Where are those? Are there even any in here? Right, M3 by eight. Yes, those are M3 by six. Yeah, they um uh I work for Cisco and we are off until the 8th of January is when we return. Uh we were supposed to return I think like the 3rd and they extended us out another couple of days for that rest of that week. So, and then my son's down visiting, and I'm not sure how long he's down here before he has to go back to um, get himself back on a schedule because he gets up at like three in the morning to go to work. He works at a, a plant that builds um, RVs. And so they they work this weird shift from like 4 a.m. to whenever. And so he's got to get up at like 3. So he'll be out here for uh, probably until the New Year's. And then he'll have to go back and spend a few days trying to get back onto a sleep schedule. Five thirty to five thirty light. Yeah. Um yeah, dude. I um so I used to get up at five o'clock all the time. And then I got out of the military and I had a choice of when I go into work. So yeah. Well we don't do that no more. I'm the retired grumpy old tech sergeant vet, so we uh yeah, we don't do that no more unless we we have to and we have to when we're like getting up to drive to Murph or Earth or one of the other Earths or you know getting up to go fly when it's not stupid busy. You know, those are good reasons, but uh now we're going to do a few heat set inserts. Let me set that aside. You get up three thirty to be at work at five thirty. You gotta like cramp and do your hair and all that good stuff. Cause I don't know about you, but I'm like I'm up. I'm starting coffee while I'm getting dressed, and then boom, I'm out. I can be out the door in like ten minutes. So you may have drove seventy down the back roads. Oh well, that, that's what back roads are for. Like the the main road that comes down to my house, there's like literally not a posted speed limit on it. I mean, there's probably technically a speed limit, but and so we've got two different types. You can use the kind of all-in-one switch socket or the filtered inlet and a separate switch. This is the one that we'll be using. So this one is kind of an unneeded part. Always good to print it out though until you decide or or figure out what you're getting. So that's that's fine. Now if I think about it, since I'm gonna be putting heat sets in, I might as well at the very least grab the four corners. 
because they're all going to be the same type of heat sets. All right. Let me go get that. Oh. I haven't seen the USB-C one of these. USB-C Keystone Jack. That's kind of neat. Oh, you sent me money? Sweet! Oh, yeah, well, if you got dogs, you definitely got to spend time playing with the dogs. Definitely got to do that. All right, so we're just going to drop some heat sets out and... We've got a few heat sets. There will be two in the edges to mount a uh, plate, and then one in the bottom that will be used for the um, um, bottom panel. I'm really liking this stealth product, by the way. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I, I uh, when I left the military, I was working as a DoD contractor, so I didn't necessarily have to still get up crazy early depending on where I was working uh, but I still did and was normally in there at normal time um, and then when I came out to North Carolina from Colorado it was like all bets were off at that point because I was truly in the private sector um, working for Cisco and so it was like I I would get up probably six ish so that I could drive into work. And once we went uh, work from home, I alarm set at seven o'clock. I'm normally rolling out of bed at like seven thirty, getting cleaned up, make some coffee, up and on by eight. so much nicer when the commute to work is like literally walking across the house. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I kind of liked shift work. Like there was times when it was like, hey, it's great working 11 to 11, right? Because you're going into work and nobody else is on the road, which makes life easy. Um, and when you're leaving work, as long as you're getting out on time, you're not, ha you know, you're getting out right before a lot of people are out for lunch. So you can normally get home pretty fast and easy as well. Um, the good news is where I currently live, when I do go into the office, um, 
Yeah, it's set cruise control at 70. I need to I need to break cruise when I'm going to work because I get off Highway 1 onto Highway 540, which is a little bit sharper turn, but coming the other way, they've got that turn radius so nice, you can leave cruise control at 70 to 75, and even in the truck, just right around the curve. Now this one, uh, we have a few more heat sets to go in. You know, we've got the standard three, and then we got another extra two um, to allow us to plug in and screw down the, um, whatchamacallit, the, oh, the filtered, that's what I was thinking, isolated, the filtered inlet. Okay, so those are done. We'll worry about the rest later because um, we'll have to go through and all of the the skirt panels or the skirt pieces will need some type of heat set added, but we'll do the rest later on when we get that stage. It'll be easier to do most of the wiring without having all of these in the way anyhow. Um, I just figured it would be easier to do those four corner pieces um, while I had them out. Oops. We're going to take our piece and we're going to need to build our inlet, outlet. There we go. A filtered inlet. I did check. This does already have a fuse in it. And let's fuse down. So it's always good to try and remember which way this goes in. So this has the little notched edge on it. So this is the part that goes up against the 2020. This has the heat set. This is where your bottom panel goes. So doing it this way, um, your ground is facing the bottom and it's a longer pin. So if the if there's any sag to the connector or it gets hit and starts to get pulled out, chances are it's going to pull down, which means it'll come off the, the neutral and line first and still have ground. And then on our switch, once again, we want to make sure that down is the off position. Because I always like down, you know, be able to reach back around without looking because you can't see these normally and just down is always off. So we need our M3 by 10 flathead. M3 by 12 or M3 by 6? We don't have M3 by 10 in here that I can see. 12 should be fine. Um, it'll stick through a little bit further, but we shouldn't have anything over here that would pose a problem. But I'm going to run this in there, and if it looks like it's just going to be like way, way too much sticking out, I should have some tens over. I've, I've got a kit that's got a whole bunch of different sizes in it. I, I can live with that much sticking out. That there shouldn't be anything over there that would um, catch on that or hit on that and potentially cause us an issue down the road.
Yeah. I get that, Cherry. Okay, so that piece is there. Once again, this is going to be the top. This is going to be the bottom. Our switch. So, zero for off. We're going to make sure that that's in the downward position. Push that in there, and that's nice and captured in there. And we'll take our Omron. And yes, I know you provide an SSR, Chewy. I cannot, in good conscience, use a Fotec on one of these. It's it's just not. It's not. Uh, we'll just say safe. So once again, um, it's got the metal bottom to it. You do want to mount these on metal, whether it's the DIN rail clip or you'll see on my annex, well, this, where this will mount directly to a piece of extrusion. You want that metal to metal contact because that'll act as a heat sink. Okay. Um, and it'll also work well when we go to ground it because you will add a grounding lug to this. So, and I always, wind up doing this so that way load at this end here with that end I'll wind up flipping it around we go to do the install once again we're going to use them four by six give me one second folks Okay, folks, sorry about that. Um, that was my dad. So between my, my brother and my parents, uh, they, they've, one of them has called me the last like five streams. They don't talk to me any other day, but like right when I'm streaming. So I guess it's a way for them to know that I'm, I'm around and I'll, I'll answer the phone, but. Hey, Ramon, welcome on in. Welcome on in. Uh, let's see, Wolf Designs. Now I work for a nonprofit maker space. I set my own hours most days. So uh, depending on what project I'm working on is what my, yeah, that's nice. See, eventually that's what's going to happen. Um, I will wind up leaving my current position and go do something more fun. 
maybe be a, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe I'd be a member at large of KB3D or something. Get one of those gigs where I go around and, and be at all the shows and do marketing and stuff like that. Hey, shenanigans, how's it going? How is it going? Don't think I can get the wife to move to Ohio. There, there's lots of snow there. Uh, we're going through and just prepping all of our parts that we're going to need to start doing the electronics. We're not going to do the Z end stop. There's no need for it because we've got CNC tap installed, so we don't deal with that. No need to mount that. We still haven't mounted our bed, but no worries, we will mount that. We're also not going to be mounting an XY end stop pod. We have an X end stop mounted on the tool head on the CNC tap. We will be mounting a Y end stop on the back right motor. Um, and we'll be using an umbilical because we'll be doing CAN bus for the tool head. So that means we won't need the X and Y chains. We'll just need the Z chain. Uh, and the two, the A and B motor and the Y end stop will be the only wires that will go through that chain. So it really cleans up the wiring a lot. Um, Wagos. So we're going to need some Wagos. And our guy did provide Wagos. The other thing that I'm going to do, and that's another reason why we haven't mounted the bed yet, other than it just adds more weight right now and it doesn't need to be installed yet. Um, I started to print off the part and it failed, so I need to reprint it. Um, but I'm printing off the, um, the mounting that the LDO Motors uses. So you'll use two of the two... Uh, two slot Wagos and the JST connectors, um, which I've got several of those now. I've got the twos, the threes, and the fours because I liked them so much after doing the LDO kit. So basically I've got the part to print out that'll hold the two Wagos and then the JST. So the Wagos will go in for the actual bed power and then the thermistor will plug into one side and then come out the other and go down into the control board. So that's how we're going to do that, is just that little two-pin JST. So that makes, that'll make life a little bit easier and make it so if he ever goes to do any future upgrades, like maybe he wants to do the kinematic, yeah, the kinematic bed mounting or anything like that, it makes it easier because all the connections for the bed are at the top. So you don't even have to flip it over and get into the uh, electronics panel. So let's see if his print tolerances were good. Are so good. Oh, no, ain't all the way, but always kind of a pain in the butt because these are designed with pretty tight tolerances to start with. And if your quick tolerances are, are tight, then they're going to go in and be very tight. If your quick tolerances are not, then they may not go in at all. Um, if they're too good, they're, they're going to go in and never come back out. And I think these are going to be in the never come back out category. without breaking the part or cutting the part apart, which isn't necessarily a bad idea. Been retired for 10 years. Oh yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what's even better than 
be all you can be. Yeah. Um, being retired and empty nested is like the cream of the crop. Like, you realize you have so much free time, you've got normally more money, um, and life is good. Yeah, they still don't feel like they fully clipped in the front. But at the same time, I don't want to like continue to try and cram it down in there and wind up busting the Wagos. So, they're, they're not going to come out. So, and now we're going to start actually doing some install stuff. So, let me get some of this stuff out of the way. Let's take these three films and scoot them over. We're going to put the USB C back in. There you go, USB C. And somewhere around here, I'll have to find them. I've got the, oh, there they are. We'll also go ahead and toss in a uh, Cat5 jack. Pull those out of the way. All right, put these up. And then we'll bring the printer back up here and start doing some install work. So I've got the back panel towards me. Raise you guys up. Yeah, exactly, Timor. So much nicer when the kids have moved away and they don't come back. Or they come back for visits, but they don't come back to like move in. Though, to be quite honest, I, I let my kids move back in. That's not that big of a deal. Okay, so we've got the rear of the um, printer towards us. Our Wagos are going to go over on this, um, which would be the back right-hand side. So... Once again, Chewy, if you're here, your um, your prints are too high. You gotta yeah, fix your uh, Z adjust or Z offset. This is gonna go right up here. We're gonna need M5 by 10 and a couple of M5 T nuts.
because we've got our DIN rails here, I'm probably going to need to use my ball end um, X wrench. Then we got an ad break. Uh oh, thought your stitches were opening up. That's not good. There we go. We're going to move this over, and basically, we're lining this um, this side of it up um, right to the edge of the motor which will make this just clear the, the hole that our wires are going to come through for our bed. And the uh, rest of the stuff coming down the cable chain. Sorry, not the bed, but the, uh, the motors and the thermistor, or excuse me, the motors and the end stop, the bed are going to come out through this circle there. Okay, so the Wagos are installed. Um, now we're going to go through and do M3 T-nuts at the top. And this will be to mount our filtered inlet. What I try and do is just get these done. Kind of a little bit away from the motor and I'll get the screw started and then slide it over to the motor. These are going to be M3 by 8 T-nuts. I'm sorry, T M3 by 8 screws going into the M3 T-nuts. Let's go and grab the um, ball socket driver. Make life a little bit easier. And get the screws to go in the hole instead of Make sure they're connected, slide this over, and then go ahead and tighten down your bolts. Fine, it's easier to do it that way. Now it's going to show us how to do our little snap. Um, mounts for our den rails and it's going to tell us how to go through and start installing our items and of course we'll start with our power supply we've got our inlet here our wagos to disperse our 110 so we want our 
um, thingamabob down here. And it's going to go in such a way, like this. So just notice that this was set to 230. So that could have been a potentially bad thing. Make sure you put it to 110. Otherwise, you'll be going, why is this acting weird? And this is going to be a little bit harder to get these to snap on. And the reason being is this is an actual steel DIN rail versus the anodized aluminum ones, which are slightly different sized. So this may be a little bit more pressure than you're used to seeing. I'm on you, little booger. Yeah, there we go. When you see me, I'm putting pressure underneath the polycarbonate so I don't bend that or snap that as I put these clips on. There we go. Now, moving this sideways is going to be kind of painful, but we should be able to get it moved a little bit. I'm going to turn this around because there is going to be a, a part that will help keep this sturdy that will go on this side. If I can figure out where that part, where that printed part is. Hmm. Okay, folks, you have to take my word because if it's printed out, it might be. I may not have it printed out, so we'll have to print that part and get the, uh, there. like I said, there'll be a brace that'll come down from this corner screw and go into this bracket and that'll just help keep this sturdy. I mean, it's going to be pretty darn sturdy as it is because that, that steel rail is going to be, um, it's, it's, it's just a different size and thickness than the anodized aluminum one. Nice, Timor. So you got the K1. Hey, 491 Phantom, how's it going? And thank you, uh, Solar. These are the colors that Chewy um, had uh, decided on. It's the Galaxy Dark Gray and the Galaxy Purple ABS by uh, Polymaker. So I will print off that, um, that brace part right there. And we'll get that added. So... That goes this way. In front of the power supply is where our controller goes. And you'll notice it shows all of our connect or our power connectors towards the same side as the power or the uh, power supply power connectors are. And once again, this is going to be 
harrowing trying to get these to pop on there. And in fact, you know what I'm going to do? Yeah. I don't want to stand the chance of snapping the, the board on any of these. So I'm actually going to dismount the boards, get the mounts installed, and then screw the, uh, screw the um, controllers back on the mounts. Hey, Tez Liz, good morning. Papa Barry Z, good morning. So once again, if, if we were going on the standard uh, aluminum DIN rails, these would pop on with no problem. In fact, they might be just a tad bit loose. You saw how much um, trouble I had getting the, and how much pressure I had to put to the power supply to get those to pop on. I do not want to stand the chance of snapping the motherboard. The other thing I wanted to do is flip those around. Um, so the way the clips were originally set up is the hook side is here and the, um, the squishy side that would clip on is on this side. The problem with doing that is this is how I'd have to reach in between these. So I think for, for ease of maintenance later on, I like to turn these around because I'll have more room to be able to reach in there and try and undo these clips from this way. So that actually popped on a little bit easier than I was expecting it to. And then this one's going to be a little more fun. Come on. This problem is it's not fully seated on there. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that your stepdaughter is sick. Oh, Phantom. Not good. Hope she gets feeling better soon. And that it's just something like the flu and not COVID or anything like that. Did you a weekly update on Discord? No worries, Chewy. Nomi's back. Be on your best behavior.
Okay, so that's installed. Now we need to install our Raspberry Pi, and it's going to go in this orientation with our um, outlets facing the front. Spacing wise, you know, we'll figure that out as we go and do our installs. Let's see if this will pop on nicely. No, it's going to be a pain just like the other one. Like I said, I really don't want to. Yep, we'll take it off rather than stand a chance of snapping a board because that'll be depressing to snap a Raspberry Pi 4B. Hey, Chewy, do you know what size 4B this is? Was like a 2 gig, 4 gig, 8 gig? Not that it matters, and we'll find out when we go and install software on it, but. And I haven't installed software on any of this stuff yet, so. Um, I was looking and I didn't see. And old man eyes can't read the silk screen on the chip itself. I mean, I guess the easy way is to take a look at mine because I've got both 2 and 4 gig there, but Let's see if uh, my readers will help. Yeah, I definitely, I think this is an early model, but it's not saying what the uh, memory size is on it. But regardless, like I said, it doesn't really matter. You would have sharpened it on the board. Well, you didn't sharpie it on the board. But regardless, let's get our mount mounted. And we go. Now we can just screw this back in. Yeah, I've got um, 102W that I can take out, and I'm going to take it out of the Flying Bear Reborn 2, and I'm actually going to put in the their MKS Pi and their touchscreen because I'm having issues with the, uh, you know how we modified the original touchscreen? I'm having issues with that modification where the print ends and it doesn't clear clipper screen. So it's main sales cleared, but the clipper screen itself isn't. Um, it still shows that the print is, is uh, like 99%. So it won't let you, it's basically hung and it won't let you redo or do another print until you do a reset. And so that's kind of a, a pain in the butt. So I'm gonna swap out and go with a um, MKS Pi 
and a MKS um, touchscreen. And then from there, um, after I get that on there, it's going to go over to Evil Diesel's house because he needs to be printing some parts for his wife's cosplay. The other thing I need to do is I need to print a mount for the UTC. There is a mount, um, a DIN mount for it. I'm going to print that. That's going to go right here next to our Raspberry Pi. So once again, the front rail is all 24 volt. Um, the Raspberry Pi will connect via USB to the um, UTC and from USB to the, um, whatchamacallit, uh, octopus. So I could potentially move this further down, put this in the middle. Since these two are going to be 24, this is going to be 5 volt. Um, we'd also have the 5 volt power supply and the um, solid state relay to install for the bed. And the solid state relay installs with the inputs facing the 24 volt side and the um, in the load facing what would be the bed. So the load's over here, the input's over here, that's installed, and our 5 volt power supply would mount over here. Um, we will be installing that. Once, ex uh, once again, I need to print the LRS 25.5 DIN mount. We need to mount the or print the DIN mount for the um, UTC. Um, apparently, those are going to be in the dark gray. Provided I have enough, yes, I do. I got the dark gray in there. So I'll have to throw that on one of the printers and print it soon. So I will print that between now and the next stream. We should be able to move on without having these things. Um, plugged in right now because we're not going to be getting into software config or at least not that much software config. It's right now is ridiculous. Okay, you're working on a switch wire. Oh, yeah, don't scratch them, Solar. Don't do that. Yeah, I can imagine the itching's ridiculous. Um, well, I just saw on Facebook um, one of our neighbors fell at her. Uh, I think it's the daughter in law, so their son's house, and broke her foot in four places and her ankle in three places. After the shower. Oh, yeah. After the shower, things start to dry back out. Yeah. So the other thing, Chewy, is I notice we've got four um, TMC 2209 drivers. One of them's missing a, a heat sink. We can solve that. Um, this driver here is also a TMC. This is a 1.2. I've had issues with 1.2s working right. So I'm probably going to swap that out with the 1.3. And we'll need to add a couple of more motors because we need what? Zs, A, B. Yeah, so we're going to need three more drivers because, like I said, I've had issues with the 1.2. I'll take it back. I need uh, two more drivers because I don't need one for the extruder um, because that will be on the CAN bus. Yeah, so that's going to have to get swapped out. Let me see if I've got.
Give me one second, folks. And there we go. We've got quite a few uh, 2209s here. And I did just order the, what did I order? The SKR3EZ um, board and a WaveShare 7.9 inch screen. And those will be used for the um, NX Engineering A3. So the I, I went with the EZ board because that particular SKR EZ board can take both step sticks and the EZ drivers. I've got plenty of the step sticks, so I'm just going to put step six in it um, because that board. It's also capable of running 5160s. I don't plan on running 5160s in it. I just plan on running 2209s. But somewhere down the road, I may decide to change things up or use it in a different machine and put a different controller in there altogether, like, I don't know, a Kraken or something. Um, right now, I'm setting that one up for... The SKR um, three and the Constellation Supernova. Okay, Royal Nomi, well, be careful as you hobble. We want, we want to keep you in one piece. And I'll tell you what would work great in this Chewy would be a Leviathan board. In fact, I'm trying to decide how many changes I want to do to my 2.4 because you know, I've got Tiber Dragon, which is an LDO kit. So that's pretty much staying the LDO kit plus the CNC tap, right? But the Fey Dragon behind me, the 2.4 behind me, I've got the, um, whatchamacallit, the um, Chaotic Labs full carbon fiber kit for it. And I'm going to, Take that from printed tap to a CNC tap 2.0 and uh, swap out the screen for a 4.3 um, touch. Yeah, you have an octopus. That's what's sitting here. I got gotcha. you. I was just saying that the Leviathan would work for this which I think is what it was actually designed for, was for these. Um, now I do need to get a heat sink on the one. Guess I'll use one of these. And yeah, I'm trying to remember if I used a M8P or an octopus in mine, but I'm like, I've got a Leviathan. It needs to go in something. So do I upgrade? 
my 2.4 to Leviathan, which means technically I could at some point move my A and B motors to 48 volts. I mean, because that would be why you'd put a Leviathan in there, as it does have the 5160s for the A and B motors. Okay, so we've got our Z1, 2, 3, or 0, or Z, Z1, 2, and 3, and then A and B motors, so we're good there. I think we're going to uh, X and Y, and then the 3, or the 4 Zs, whichever. Um, we do have the jumper set for TMC 2209s in UART. We have all of the fans currently jumpered for 24 volt. So let me just double check what it's telling us. Jumpers, remove all the jumpers, remove all the jumpers in the diag pins. We did remove all, remove the USB 5 volt supply to avoid the interaction between the USB 5 volt, the Raspberry Pi, and the 5 volt of the MCU, which there is not one there. Move all the jumpers on the fan voltage selectors so you can set the current voltage. I set them all to 24 volt. Remove the jumper out of the pro voltage. I believe I have that set to 24 volt. Remove all the jumpers, then go back and install the jumpers in the appropriate place. Once again, all of the motor jumpers are set to TMC UART mode. Um, I do that because if for some reason we have an issue with one of these motors, we can always take it and move it to one of the spare motor slots. And they are currently set up, so we'd be good there. We'd power down, we'd move the motor, try and move, or move the driver and the motor plug to see if it was a socket issue for the board. Because believe it or not, I have had an issue like that before on one of my boards where one of the sockets was dead. Um, ensure the diag jumpers are not set. They are not. We will be using end stops, not sensorless homing on this. Power selection header is empty for the 5 volt. Uh, we will do that when we go to, you know, we will add that when we physically go to to do the board because my preference would be um, get the 110 wiring done up and then in series get the Raspberry Pi set up using the 5 volt power supply. Then connect it into the board, flash the board with clipper, and then we can wire up the board. We'll flash the UTC. And, and then slowly wire things up after we get them flashed and talking. We got our stepper driver set. And then the lovely wiring schematic, which is going to be way too small to read easily. And we get into wiring. We've ensured that the uh, power supply is set to 115 versus 230 and we're going to start doing our wiring now to make things easier and to make sure I have all the proper wires and the proper colors because well you know you buy wire as a package and then you quickly run out of specific colors because you try and do all the right color coding and then you're stuck because you're out of the specific colors that you need to do wiring so I've gone out and I've done this a couple of times where I've used the Lineo under the deck wiring kit. So the nice thing with this is it should have all the wires that we need um, to do a standard wiring job. Um, and there, there's allowances for some variations. This, I find, just makes my life a little bit easier. And I love the Lineo wiring kit, so. 
pen tool. I've got a, several of those. Bed safety ground, SSR wiring, CSU to controller wiring. Um, yeah, so like power inlet to Wagos. Controller to SSR. SSR bed safety ground. PSU to controller. Safety ground for the frame and the den rail. Five volt PSU. PSU. And then plenty of zip ties, bases, various connectors, spare 24 gauge FEP wiring. Always nice to have. Oh, and look. A whole other set of Wegos. I'll have plenty of Wegos to play with. Not that I haven't bought these in bulk anyhow. So we'll grab these. We'll open them up and use them as we start digging through the wiring. And we're going to start with the PSU. Um, actually, PSU to controller, SSR. Actually, we're going to start with the power inlet to Wagos. And this is pretty nice because they've already got the all of the crimps and the wires already been started for the uh, uh, stripping the wire to go into the Wagos. This makes life easier because now it's just a simple case of following the wire scheme that we're seeing. So we have our um, round, which will go at the top here. We'll have our red that goes from here to our switch. And I want to kind of look at the switch and see how it's laid out. So off is at the bottom, on is at the top. So in essence, we're going from here to the bottom, which is the off switch. And then the on will be coming from down here. So we've kind of got, so it shows the, revert, the switch being in the opposite direction. And I really don't like that because I like off being down because when I'm reaching behind, it's easier to go down than it is to go up normally because you're reaching in and down to the back. So it's easier to go down. That's how I always wire mine up. Regardless, the red is on the right here and it's going to be on the inside edge on our switch which will be at the top here. There we go. Okay. Our blue that has the two spade connectors is going to go on the left side of our switch. And go to the other side of our switch. So it goes on the outside, the side towards the motor. Nice tight fit. Just going to move it away from the motor so I have more room to push that on fully. There we go. 
Now our other wires just match up. So our blue goes right underneath our blue, the red goes underneath the red. With blue, red to red. Okay, there we go. So we've got our initial wires installed. Now we're going to feed those into, well, this show is going uh, directly into all the power supply stuff without going through Wagos, and there should be one which shows the optional Wagos for the alternate wiring. So that's what we're going to go to. So on our Wagos, the blue on the right, the red in the center. The green on the left and it shows us going into the farthest side now you can leave this wire length and just go in and have some excess wire if you really want to you can cut it shorter to make these wire runs smaller i'm going to leave them the way they are even though we can see right through the bottom because we have a clear panel and i will leave that up to uh, Chewy, if he wants to go through and try and make the wires shorter and less obvious with the clear panel, simply because it would have it could have ramifications down the road for trying to do maintenance on the printer. And these are going in the the side furthest or closest to our um, foot. And there you go. Those are installed. And now there's, you know, a series of how we can plug these in. Um, we're not going to plug in the five volt because of course we don't have the five volt mounted yet. Yeah, there you go, Chewy. Um, so we want to do the SSR next. So we'll take our SSR wiring. Two cables. So from the right side of our AC load, which would be number two, we're going to take that and it's going to plug into our Wago mount. So we need to Go into our load. Once again, it's going to come over to our Wego. So we've got a ton of excess. So we can really trim this down. And I'm probably going to trim this one down, Chewy, just because there's just way too much extra there. On my strippers.
Okay, sounds good. So our load goes to, we'll say the metal connector over here. Just kind of give a little bit of a tug on the cable. Um, this other connector will go to the bed. Um, we need to run our connection over to our power supply. So we'll grab the um, PSU wires. So line the neutral and ground so we'll have our front line load which is the red Okay, and when I'm doing these on the power supply, you'll notice on your, on your terminals, right, the fork connector is biased to one side, right? So when I'm putting these on, I'm putting them on so that the wire that's crimped in is facing down. So we've got the smoothest top. Um, and the reason I do that is because if I ever need to tap another line off of this or add another connector, I can reverse it and put it the other way. And they're going to make a, a flat surface where if I try and do like this, where I go the, the fat side against the skinny side, by by default, there's going to be some type of gap there that I got to push down and I'm going to bend and weaken these where if I do them flat to flat, there's going to be a lot less flex there um, whenever I have to screw anything else down to them. And so this is going to come over here and go into the load. Once again, I will shorten this a little bit. I'm not going to do it crazily because that way if we have to shift anything, um, we're, we're good to have a little bit of slack. And it makes for a little bit of a service loop. So if we have to do anything and repair a wire or anything down the road, we've got a little bit of a service loop there. Here's that one. We'll use our blue one, which is the neutral. Well, and the other reason is this this kit's made to work with a 250, a 300, or a 350 kit. So, you know, if if you're putting this on a 250, you're going to have a lot of extra wire that you can take off. If you're putting it on a 350, it may be perfect 
um, lengths for all of these wires. And all I'm going to do is kind of route these around, get these kind of where they're they're out of the way. Um, and in the order, I'll say prescribed on the um, thing there. Now we're going to do our ground for the ESU. A lot of free jumper wires. Yep. Okay, so we've got those there. In fact, I want to bring this one underneath. Second one goes to Second one of each one of these goes over here to the five volt. Need to add the ground between these two. Another ground somewhere. I'm not seeing another. Oh. I mean, I've got ground wire I can use. Let me see. Yep, that's what we're going to do. Is we're just going to reuse this piece here. Down there to ground there. Should be good enough. Um, and we'll need a couple of spade connectors, which are not there. So let me grab my my big connectors and my crimpers. Oh. Yeah, there's always one piece that I have to crimp here and I can I can never remember which it is, so now we know. Inside the other, yep, 
Yeah, it always means there's extra wire that can be used other places. Um, I do try and keep these little ends because you could always use them. You know, if you're doing another printer build and you're like, oh, well, I can use a, uh, you know, I need some ground or I need some whatever. I've always got plenty of extra sitting over there. And like I said, it's also nice when you're able to use the right color for the right wire, especially when you're dealing with the 110 side. So down here, we're going to undo the M4, which is a um, M3, well, two and a half, obviously. We're going to go right under the head of that mounting bolt. We're grounding the SSR to the metal bracket, which is attached to the DIN rail. So everything there is now grounded. And this is where we're doubling up on a wire. So once again, our ground that we initially put on was facing down. This one's facing up. So we'll get a nice good sandwich there and be able to really tighten this down. Make sure that we're nice and good connected. So all of that's done. The only thing we don't have is the frame um, ground. It's the bed safety ground. Straight to ground to the frame and the DIN rail. That sound was. Um, so, This would be with that spare ground to do the jumper here, but I was able to use that one. So I'll have one spare ground. One of these is going to go into the Wago, and then it goes over and it just shows it going somewhere to the frame where you would mount this and do the frame. Oh, hey, Chris, Merry Christmas with a uh, 5,000 gifted bits. Well, thank you so much. Chris for cheering the 5,000 bits. That would have been the noise that I was looking around trying to figure out what it was. I appreciate it so much, Chris. I uh, hope you guys have a wonderful and Merry Christmas for you and yours as well. So one end of this goes into the Wago. The other end would go to the frame. Now, Chris, um, if you've done your frame grounding, where did you ground your frame to? It's, it'll be very merry as soon as you get done with taxes. Exactly. Um, so where did you ground your frame to? Oh, thank you, Pez Liz, for a hundred bits and a happy Festivus to you too. Peekaboo is now following. Awesome. T-nut with two large washers and a ring terminal. Okay. Uh, Elenia 42 now following. Thank you, thank you. So, yeah, that sounds like a good idea then. We'll do that. We'll, uh, let me get this out of the way. We'll do a rolling T-nut.
a couple of M5 washers. And you said a um, it would probably be too long. I need an M5 by eight. And so the smallest we've got in this kit, isn't it? Yep. Let me go grab an M5 by eight. And preferably, you want all of this to be um, the plain silver screws, I believe. So we'll have our two washers. Um, I don't have a round nut or a round uh, connector available, but we will use that fork connector maybe, maybe not. I'd have to use, uh, I have to use M3 for that and less swap connectors. We pop that back out. Let's put this on the part of the frame that's hard to get to because of the power supply now. It'll be the one time that the um, rolling T-nut actually fits well in the tensor frame as well. Pull that guy out. Yeah, M3 is plenty of metal, exactly. Well, M3 is plenty of metal, and like I said, you'd have to go to a really oversized ring to do uh, an M5 screw. There's the M3. Grab a couple of M3 washers. An M3 by eight bucket head cap screw. I will sandwich the thing between two washers. And try and screw the whole thing into the M3 team up which did not work out well for me. Oh my God. Why so friendly on it? You love a good wiring diagram? Yeah. Um, so we're not doing maintenance. We're actually doing an initial build. Um, there isn't a PID temp in Orca Slicer. Um, it would be a command line entry or a scenario for you. So,
Okay, so that is nice and connected. So we'll have our frame ground. Ah, what else is next? What else can we get done? Talks about doing the print bed. We haven't mounted the print bed yet. We still need to do that part. Um, let's do the controller, the PSU to the controller. So this gives us um, port terminals to barrels, and we won't need the barrel connectors for this. We will take those off and reuse them because a lot of controllers will use, um, well, barrel type screw downs, kind of like our hot end or heated bed ones on the uh, board. That's why they added ferrules. In the case of the octopus, we have actual screw terminals. So and you will need both. Well, you'll need two uh positive and two negative. Or you can go through and I'll say like daisy chain them and go uh, 24 volt into the, uh, well you have power, motor power and bed power here. We won't need bed power because we're powering the bed from the SSR, but you do need a connection to both power and motor power. So that's why we'll need the two connections. So we're going to go ahead and get our wires installed on the PSU. And then we'll, we'll cut the length and swap the ferrules out for the other standard connectors. And that'll leave us another set of 24 volt that we can bring over to our um, whatchamacallit, our uh, UTC module. doing a speaker mod to play a sound at boot up ready to print um i will not be if chewy wants to that that's on him thank you for putting that in there aaron for the uh pid checks i appreciate that Oh yeah, and if you want to see good wiring diagrams, take a look at the LDO ones. They have really good wiring diagrams. Um, not that other printers don't, but comparatively speaking, they actually show you how to properly wire up your mains connector and stuff like that, where some other ones, they just basically say, here's the suggested components, 
you're on your own because they don't want liability with people dealing with mains power. And you guys were about to let me wire this up um, without doing my, what I will call as a pre-flight check. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these and just let them dangle there. But before I go any further, um, I want to check that my power supply works, especially since I can see that there's a little bit of a dent in the top shell. So, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to plug it in, we're going to turn it on, and this is going to make sure that our power supply is properly wired up. We're going to check once again, we got load, neutral, ground. Everything going back to Wagos, all of our Wagos are nice and solid. Connection with our ground for our SSR is good. And we're gonna plug this in. We're gonna do an initial um, power on. We do have a light here. Let me see if I can turn this around and you can possibly see that we have a light. Not going to be a long enough power cord. But we do have a light here. Now, what I want to do is check and make sure that it is truly 24 volts. Um, and we don't need to adjust our voltage any. So we'll get our any Danny multimeter out. So we've got our DC voltage there. Positive to positive, negative to negative. So our neutral is going to be your negative. Load is going to be your positive. That's like to be one one over on this side. Be negative, be positive, and I'm at twenty four point two volts. Right. 24.2 volts. That's pretty good. You do have a potentiometer right next to your LED that you can um, change that to make it exactly 24 volts, but 24.2 is good. If you're two to three high or low, you're, you're within a good range and you're going to be safe. If you're more than that, it, then you really want to go and take a look at it and square things away and adjust it. Um, so we're good. We're going to go ahead and power that off and unplug and wait for the light on your PSU to go out. You're letting those capacitors discharge. If you do not wait for the light to go out and you start playing with things, you could shock yourself and blow things up. Ah, thank you. This shirt, I can't take credit for this shirt. This is a Nero 3DP piece of merch called Crimpin' Ain't Easy. And it's it's all about, uh, you know, doing all the wiring for a Voron. Like, back in the day, there were no pre-made kits like the lineal one that I'm using. And it was all, you're, you're picking the right size, you're cutting, you're crimping. Um, and doing it all, and I've done full up wire jobs before, and so yeah, it's 
whenever I hit this stage, this is the shirt that it's just, it screams that you got to wear it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put um, our uh, port terminals on here. So just peel off a little bit or no, peel off a little bit. Um, strip a little bit of your wire. You don't need a whole lot. Um, probably about, uh, I don't know, four or five mil, four or five millimeters. And on the 110 side here, I believe we're using 18 gauge. And you want to be using like 18 or 20 gauge for doing your connection between the 24 volt and your power supply. Um, same thing goes for your 24 volt that's going out to your bed and things like that. Um, you, you at least um, 20 gauge, if not 18 gauge. Um, I do with it. And there's really no need to go like 16 or 14 gauge on your on your wiring to your PSU. Um unless you're going and doing an old uh like 12 volt system. Buys you one according to the wife, yeah. Yes, folks. Um, make sure you follow Aaron 3DP, Pez Liz, um, KB3D. So KB3D has been streaming Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays fairly regularly. Um, Pez Liz is on a stream almost all the time. Um, either her stream, she's on Maker Deck, she'll be on the ZNZ show. Um, so she's just feels like she's always got a stream going, except for Saturday morning. She she's pretty she's pretty uh uh good at being here Saturday mornings, trying to wake up and having her morning coffee and brunch. Okay, so. We got motor power and power. Motor power negative. Board power negative. Uh, 
want to make sure your connectors are fully inserted. That's possible electrical connection. Now, once again, on this one, we will not be using the bed power, and we will not be using the bed output because we're not connecting our bed up that way. We're going to connect up to the SSR. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect into one of the uh, HE connectors to do that. And we're going to connect that with some 24 gauge wire because we don't need the higher gauges for that. Um, we're not going to be connecting into the Raspberry Pi just yet because we don't have our other PSU. We need to get that mounted first. So we'll have to come back and do that. Um, Raspberry Pi controller board. So this is where they're showing you about bringing power into the board and then basically doing small pigtails um, to jumper between this power and that power. I always just run separate wires. Um, it just feels more right to me, I'll say. And it starts talking about bringing in the bed wires to the build plate. Um, this would be your ZN stop, your bed thermistor. You can see the SSR is going to go on E1. And we should have a set of wires that is controller to SSR. Yep, Saturday morning coffee with Luke. Yeah, that would be awesome, Aaron, to do some how-to videos on macros. Oh, thank you for the follow, Sally Prince. Welcome on in. Speaking of coffee, we love our Duncan here um, because it's closer to the house than anything else. And you can get Dunkin' Donuts. So, once again, the wire kit has ferrules on one side and ferrules on the other. In this case, we're going to be doing ferrules on the board side, but we need our port connectors on the other. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll get our um, SSR connections onto the board first, and then we'll cut to length and add our other connectors. And for this, we'll need our little um, uh, flathead. Now you've got a choice. You can go out and get a small flathead. You can get a set like, I don't know, an iFixit kit um, that has just about all the different bits you could ever want in it. Or, if you order from KB3D, you'll get a KB3D screwdriver, most likely. It's going to have your little flathead in it. It's great for these screw terminals. It's also great for using as a pry bar or using to get belts into a very, very tight um, printed part for your Annex Engineering K3. And it also has one hell of a magnet. It actually has, I believe, an N52 magnet in it. And this magnet is good. Right? Um, so it's really good when you have a metal workbench like this because you can always leave it uh, right near the workbench. So you always have a screwdriver if you really need one. Or a pry bar. So now we're going to open up, and once again, we're going to use HE1. So I just go through and, and unscrew these all the way so they're fully open. And you do want to maintain polarity here. So the negative goes into the negative, or the black will go into the negative. We'll clamp that all the way down, make sure it's good and tight, and then do the tug test. Positive is going to go into the positive side. And then you'll screw that side down. 
give it the tug test, make sure it's nice and tight. And then we'll bring these wires around. Talks about installing the wires for the motor. Does it not show the SSR? Where's the SSR connect? Sorry, I'm going to desk scroll real fast to find the SSR connections. I don't think I passed them. Did I pass them? Really good as a butt scratcher. Great. Now there's something I'll have in my mind that I won't be able to get rid of every time I reach for that screwdriver. Okay, so it just says to the SSR, um, positive and minus. It doesn't tell us. It does say to use um, 24 gauge or larger. And I will tell you that these are not 24 gauge. Um, these are probably 20 gauge. Um, but we do have on our SSR, minus is on the left towards PSU, positive is on the right towards what will be the other, the smaller PSU. So we'll bring these over. We'll figure out about what our wire length would be. We have a cut. Same thing for the other side. a little bit of wire. And grab a couple of our fork connectors again. Careful with that one, it's small. Yeah, you almost need like the bigger one just so you don't uh, hurt yourself. Hey, Daddy Wazzy, how's it going, my friend? Welcome on in. And I know Chris doesn't like the crimps, uh, the crimped. Um, Spade or fork connector, spade connectors. I know he prefers the spotter ones that are in, that um, heat shrink at the end, and I'll agree with that. But this is what I have, and the ones that I just bought that um, solder actually um, are insulated, so they won't work for these types of connections. So. No, maybe, no, did I get, no, maybe they're insulated spade connectors, not the uh, fork connectors. Once again, positive over on this side. Negative or the black on the other side. Those are nice and good and tight. And so we only have one connection left, and that's going to be our load out. So this will be where our bed will connect in once we get our bed installed and we can do that in a little bit. And once again, we have a couple more parts that we need to print. I need to print the Wago mount that will go underneath the bed. That will be for the thermistor and the, um, 
and the bed wagos to make the bed easier to remove down the road. Um, I need to print the mount for the uh, LRS uh, 255 and a mount for the UTC so we can get those going. Um, we can probably go ahead and do our motor wire cables because these will be fun. We've got a ton of cable length here, so we will be cutting these down to size um, and repinning them. So that's always fun doing JST connectors. So the front, um, where are we at here? So front and back, and I'm looking at the layout here. So this should be Z0, one, two, three, four, so that is front left, rear left, rear right, front right, as far as your Z motors go. And that is the typical, and you want to follow this wiring pattern, especially if you start off using the, um, the base um, Voron uh, files for these, because if you don't, you're going to have some major issues because all of your um, settings will be wrong, to say the least. So, Chewy, because we have a clear panel, do you want me to put any cable raceway on here because you will see that VHB tape and the way the cable raceway is attached? Or you want me just to do all the cabling and then you come back around and do I'll say clean up cabling and and running your um, uh, sleeve and stuff. No. What? No raceway. You're going to do the. Um, yeah, just wire it, you'll clean it. There we go, that's what I thought. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of follow this around. There's a little bit of extra that'll give you some room for some sleeving. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut and re-terminate. And what I'm gonna do when I go to do this re-termination, is just look at the way the end is terminated here and get the color scheme going in the same so red or uh, black, green, red, blue. And what I'll do is I will also, when I, uh, once I get the uh, JSTs on here, I will actually bring out the, um, well, there, I'll show you a couple of ways that you can make sure that you're getting your pairs matched or your motor phases matched together. So, and the nice thing is these wires are not FEP, so they're going to be a little bit easier to work with. FEP wire is great, especially in motion systems. So silicone wire is perfectly fine here. You're under the deck, so you're not going to have the same high temps that you would inside. And it's not going to be motion related, meaning they're not in a cable chain moving around. So you're perfectly fine using silicone wire underneath the deck. And so far, all of this has been silicone wire, by the way. Okay, let me and you said you wanted all the extra wire, right, Chewy? So I will just put this in a uh in a ziploc and we will skip that off to you. 
and then five eight five eight. That was fine. Oh well, we'll get it back to you when you get the printer. We'll get it back to you. Um, should be done with this set of crimping for now. Until I get some mounts printed. I'm just going to try and clean up my area a little bit because I'm going to need to switch over to start doing um, JST crimps and I'll need to make sure I got the right stuff available for that. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to use these. On my squares if I need them. So with JSTs, it's pretty much um, two crimps. So there's a crimp around the actual wire that we just stripped and exposed, and then the next crimp is around the um, the insulation jacket, okay? So you don't need a whole lot. You probably need uh, about two millimeters, um, three at the max on a JST of exposed wire for the part that goes in the wire crimp. Like everything else you're dealing with wire, just make sure, give it a little bit of a tug to make sure that the crimp is solid. Oh, I can keep the wire? Okay, great. You do want the extra FET that I threw in, I think. Everything that was in the box is now in a slightly smaller box. Um, so it can come back to you. So anything I didn't use is in that uh, slightly smaller box now. There's less things to trip and fall over.
you know, there's two ways to figure out your um, pairs. Um, one would be to use a multimeter. The other would be right now, this motor moves pretty freely, right? So if I take two of these wires and put them together, so I've got the black and the red um, held together. It's still moving the same freely, which tells me that it is, that these are not a pair. So if I do the, do the blue and red, and I'm holding the green and the black apart, I'm putting the blue and red together and holding those two pieces together. All right, I'm not sure if you can hear that, but you can see that this isn't moving as easily now. That tells me that that pair is the same. All right, so once again, black and red. This moves pretty easy. Blue and red. You can kind of hear it. It'll feel like it's grinding. That's when you have a, the pairs matched. So blue and red go together. Black and green go together. And that's why when you see the wiring, it's black, green, red, blue. So one pair on the left, one pair on the right for your phases. So that's where I'm saying we just kind of match up the same color scheme. And that was black, green, blue, or black, green, red, blue. So Um, the other way to do it with your um, multimeter, one, it's a lot easier to do it with your pens exposed because you can actually poke the tips of your probes in the ends. Once you put it in your um, connector, the only way you can really probe them is these little slits at the back, which is kind of a pain in the butt. So if you're going to uh, probe them out with your um, multimeter, you want to do it before you put them in the connector. Now, the other thing is, is, well, is it black, green, red, blue this way, or is it black, green, red, blue this way? Doesn't matter. Because what will happen is it will either move in the correct direction or the wrong direction. In which case you can simply go into your clipper config and change the direction by adding a exclamation point or removing the exclamation point and you've changed the direction it goes. So Z0 goes into our third connector attached to motor 2.1. And you can go into 2-1 or 2-2. It doesn't matter. They're in parallel. So if you really want to, you can go into like 2-2 there. And then all four of your Z motors are side by side. And you just leave the gap between your A and B. Um, or you can just follow along your wiring diagram. So there's that one. And the other thing I will say is... Plug in the six pin side, cut the four pin side because they are different um, pin pitches and different size pins. So normally your JST kits are going to come or the JST pins that was provided with the Lineo kit are the size and pitch for the four pin size, not the six pin size. So... Just something to be aware of. It's always easier if you've got motors that are pinned versus motors that are direct um, connected.
So once again, let me, all right, let me, let me rather than do this motor, we're going to do them in order. So Z1 is going to be back here. So don't to be cognizant of, there's all your 110 wiring right with your motor. So it may have been better for me to rotate this so that the motor pins were facing down or up versus right to the side here. Um, I'm going to get this plugged in. Might be easier for me just to slide this out of the way again. It has a regular probe on it. What do you mean by a regular probe? You mean going back to the standard inductive probe? Yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of clicky. Um, Aaron isn't a big fan of clicky either. I've got the inductive probe on both of my ender wires. And then all of my, um, like, 2.4 or tridents are running some form of tap the um v0 doesn't have anything at the moment nor will it i've got a side swipe for it never one i don't think it's necessarily needed and two i think it just adds complexity that doesn't need to be there too many things that can go wrong with clicky either Something in the servo fails, so it, it puts out when it, or it, it puts the uh, probe dock out when it shouldn't. And now you may have a, a head mid print that crashes into it and breaks things, or you know, you're chasing around and is it a macro? Is it a wiring issue? Just too many things that it could be. I think tap is a cleaner solution. And the inductive probe is a clear solution and it works. I know there are some people that, you know, clicky's the greatest thing and it's one of the options that you get in the LDO kit. But, you know, if I can get rid of a Z end stop, a get rid of a Z end stop, get rid of a clicky probe and go with tap, and clean up macros and everything and just make it so much easier and cleaner, then why not? Well, now there's a big philosophical debate as well over sensorless homing or physical switches versus hall. Each one has their pros. Each one has their cons. Um, yeah, the, the fixed dot clicky is there, but you still have to go over. You have a macro that goes over to pick it up and, and put it back. 
And if something in that macro gets pooched, or if there's a wire that fails, you're stuck, right? Um, things, things can go bad very quickly. Where with the inductive probe, okay, it tries to go negative Z China. Well, okay. Um, that, that could be a bad thing, but swapping out a build plate and taking apart the tool head is a lot easier than is it an issue with the dock? Is it an issue with um, the end stop? Did the end stop mechanically fail? Did the uh, wiring fail? You know, what part of the, of the piece failed? You know, did the wiring fail or did the, um, you know, if there was some solder involved, did the solder fail? It's, I don't know. I think they're, keep it simple, stupid is a good premise, especially with electrical things. Like I tried to install clipane pairing and it installed perfectly on the Trident. Right? And then right after I got the Trident done, I went to do the um yeah, keep it simple as a way of life. Um after I did the Trident. I went to do it on the two 2.4s. Two and both the 2.4s, the install failed. And the install failed on, what was it, Mathplotlib or whatever that is, right before Numpy. And there's something wrong with that repo. Um, it's failing on the PHP signature or, or the whatever uh, SHA hash or whatever of the of the repo. So either somebody has compromised that repo or somebody did a push and didn't properly get a key updated somewhere. And I can't do any install of that library or the underlying well, that got jacked up, or uh, get it to pass any further. And it's funny that I got one to install, and then like right after I did that install, somebody did a push to the repo and borked it. So, um, well, I'll put it to you this way, uh, Chewy. I've only had one 4XY printer that I have had the motors connected right and in the right direction out of all the Core XY sitting behind me. Every single one I wind up having to um, adjust. So what do we got? We got black, green, red, blue. me, that's just part of it. It was like, okay, we got the physical config done. Um, let's go ahead and work on the software side of things. And that's kind of where it, where it is for me. So I will zip tie these loosely together, try and, um, I there's clips that when I do the paneling that I can put a couple of clips down here that I can zip tie to. 
but like I'll take these two, kind of get them run down into the the same direction, and maybe put a zip tie or two right here just to kind of keep these a little bit neater. In fact, oh, we got some zip ties. And folks, I am going to call this stream here probably after I get the next two motors done. Uh, like I said, I do have family in town and we're going to like, go and hang out and do some stuff today if they already haven't left without me. They have been known to do that. And the sad part is I just had the thought of, oh, I just heard the TV, so they haven't left. No, that's not an indication. They get sneaky. They'll, like, leave the TV on and then still leave. Yep. Okay, so two motors down. We're going to do this back um, Z motor next. And once again, we'll kind of map our wire out. Along the side here, bring it up there. Good place. Yeah, they're down there laughing at something. And we got an ad break in progress. Okay. It homed. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You got something to work. Now that is a good feeling though. When you get it to home for the first time, you're like, yes, that part's done. Now I can start into tuning. Yeah, and the one you know, like I always get the X Y Z motion going, and I'm like, yes, let me put in filament and start printing, and then that's when I realized that I didn't check the direction on my. Um... Oh, hey, Westry! Happy birthday, sis! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, dear Westry! Happy birthday to you! Now she's going to disown me. For those of you that are aware, Westry is now legal to drink in all 50 states. Um, so yeah, I always tend to forget to, um, do my, you know, like step or buzz my, um, uh, extruder. So I go to load filament and I'm like, why is this not loading filament? And then realize that it's retracting when it, you know, cause the direction's wrong. Just slightly annoying.
So we're doing one of my favorite exercises, sis, which is crimping wires. The one sketchy province in Canada. Ooh. Yeah, and I'm going to have to start stabbing um, filament bags on stream, especially when uh, Tesla's is here. He's going to start giving away free gift cards so you don't, you know, to bribe us to not stab our bags open. I'll be honest, Liz, I normally stab my bags open because I am, I'm going to be printing like the entire roll because I'm opening ABS up as I'm starting to do a new printer build. Um, but anything it's like, um, PCCF or anything that's, that's a carbon fiber or glass filled, I'm definitely keeping those bags so I can put them back in there between print sessions. And I've got to figure out because I'm going to be starting to print some PCCF for um, glass filled uh, ABS ASA soon. And those are going to need to be run through a filament dryer and preferably printed out of a filament dryer. No stab talk. I think we just got scolded, Westry. Okay, and it's left back one. Green wire. Red wire. And finally the blue wire. Okay, and we'll bring this one around and it's gonna go in the next connector. And then we'll have one more motor wire to do. And that's going to be a real uh, short one. We won't make it too short. I mean, that's where I would be like, man, if I could do the six pin, that would be, yeah, I'm not doing six pins. I refuse. Or at least I wouldn't do them on stream. So yeah, we're going to do this, this one last uh, motor connection, and then I am going to call the stream. Um, like I said, I've got uh, family in town. I'm going to go and spend some time with family. Um, my dad called earlier. Uh, apparently, we... You know, they gave us an option. We chose an option, but apparently they had started planning for the other option, which then I don't know why they gave me an option to start with. So I've got to go and figure out what the rest of my weekend is going to look like. Um, 
as far as Christmas dinner and family and all that goodness. No one entered the raffle. Holy crap. Or, excuse me. Holy cow. Somebody did a raffle and nobody entered. Or is that literally somebody named somebody? No one entered the raffle. Wow. Chris is back and he's got his gambling habit going again. How's it going? Yeah, Chris, like I said, I'm going to um, send you a DM over this weekend um, concerning something I want to do in an upcoming stream. Uh, don't worry about looking at it. I just need to get it done before I forget. So, well, it, it, it would require you to pay attention, Chewy. It, it announced that there was a raffle going on. I know you're configuring the switch wire. And if memory serves me right, I have a feeling the A and B motors, I need to either buy extensions or buy like two meter long cables. Because the A and B motors will not make it all the way down to the controller. Okay, sis. Gotta run and go get fancy crackers. Uh oh. Find fancy crackers. Are we talking like Ritz or what? Turn off. What? Green. Red. And last but not least, blue. Put that one in. We've got our four Z motors done. Hooray! And like I said, we'll work on 
doing a little bit of cable management and getting these tied up out of the way. There's a couple of different ways we can go about doing that. Um, but we'll work on that either off stream or next stream. And go ahead and these put up and get some cable stuff put up. Hey Pete, how's it going my friend? Welcome in, welcome in. And the nice thing is because we're doing a UTC or, or a CAN bus, it will make the wiring a little bit easier. Um, the things that we're left with is the five volt PSU, the bed and safety, uh, the bed safety ground. Um, and we will have uh, another stream here shortly to mount the RS25 five, mount the UTC, do some finish up wiring, and then we'll start working on configuration stuff of our build here. Um, and in essence, we are gonna be done for the day. I will probably stream some throughout next week here and there. Um, I'm not gonna guarantee when, um, but I will probably stream a little bit here and there. Um, so just be on the lookout. Uh, standard Tuesdays and Thursday stream will be there, and those will be uh, definitely the um, NX Engineering K3. But I may squeak another one of these in here or there um, just to keep working on this now that we're into the wiring phase and getting close. Um, I'm going to mount the... So we got the magnet mounted before. I'm going to mount the um, bed heater and that stuff off stream just because it'll be easier to do it that way. Um, and that'll be ready so that we can then mount. I'll print those couple of parts that I'm going to need out so that we'll have that stuff ready to go for the next stream. And... Yeah, I think we should be good to go the next stream to do some final wiring, um, get into printer config and, you know, firmware and stuff like that. And then it'll just be um, a little bit of um, oh, I had a thought there. Yeah, we'll just be working on Flashing firmware everywhere, flashing firmware on the UTC and the CAN bus board and getting all that stuff running. So, yeah, this is how far we made it today as far as wiring goes. So we've got our 110 mains coming in. We validated the voltage, the output voltage of our power supply is 24.2. We've got all of our power connectors to our octopus board. We've got the octopus board connected to the SSR. All we have left on the SSR is the one load for the bed. And we've got a Raspberry Pi mounted. We need to mount the RS-255, the UTC, get those plumbed in and run the wires from our A and B motors and the tool head. So we're, we're getting close to done. It sounds like a lot. It's a little bit because it'll be fiddly. We'll have some more crimping to do. But uh, yeah, we're, we're making some good progress here. We're making some darn good progress. Um, and then once again, like I said, I'm leaving a little bit of slack and Chewy will come in and do some cleanup um, to his heart's desires and do some cable sleeving. Because he has a clear panel, you will see all the wiring underneath. So he'll want to do a little bit of cleanup, probably. Um, but yeah. I think we're doing really good. And we are going to be done for today's stream. 
Come back, like I said, on Tuesdays and Thursdays when we work on the Annex Engineering K3. We will definitely be working on this next Saturday. And like I said, we may see some other streams here and there throughout the week as I continue to enjoy my time off and work on printer builds. In fact, it may not even be Chewy's printer build. It might be me taking apart my 2.4 and rebuilding the gantry in my 2.4 with the carbon fiber stuff. So we'll see. And if I go to do that, I will definitely post that as a separate um, stream. And who knows, maybe we'll get some titanium backers on this because I'll be taking them off of my 2.4. But um, thanks everybody for being here. Thanks for joining me today. Enjoying some coffee on a nice Saturday morning. Hopefully it's a fairly quiet Saturday morning before the fun of Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Um, especially those of you with kids or a lot of family commitments. You know it's just kind of busy, hectic, and it's a free-for-all. Um, so enjoy it. Enjoy your... Uh, your time off and stuff. Let's see who may be on that we can go raid out. Um, I do see Free Heathen on. I see Painterly Git on. Well, let me go over to main Twitch to see who else may be on. And no, uh, that's pretty much it. We got Free Heathen, Maker Deck, Painterly Git, Ron Cleveland, Chris Perillo, and Steve who's probably just printing and doesn't, he's just streaming prints. Um, so yeah, looks like we'll uh, jump back over to the Free Heathen. Um, that's the one thing with Saturdays is unless I go really long, uh, the options are kind of slim as far as who to raid out to. Let me go ahead and get that raid started. Um, and come along with me, go give some holiday cheer to the free heathen. And once again, thank you all for being here. Thank you, Chris, for the 5,000 bits and, um, also Pez Liz and everybody else that gave bits today. I really appreciate it. It helps with the channel, um, helps me continue to get cool things that we can do on the channel. And we have a lot that's going to be going on in 2024. So thank you all for being here. Happy holidays. Happy Merry Christmas. Happy Festivus. Um, Kwanzaa. New Year. The whole, the whole nine yards. Hanukkah. Yeah, everything. Thanks, guys and gals. Uh, let's go over to Free Heathen and have some fun. Bye now.